everyone. This is Shatarupa and welcome to Rasainika. So, hope you all are doing well. Today, I have brought our new topic that is most important 10 points regarding our lab techniques in chemistry. So, I want to say chemistry is such a branch of chemistry, chemistry is such a branch of science which where we mainly deal with lots of atoms, molecules, their structures, properties and compositions and also with their energetics. So how more than one atoms come close to each other, they can make new bonds or can break older bonds and finally they can form new compounds with different features or sometimes with same features and the structures also. So we must know first these facts, okay? So in order to understand the chemistry better and in order to get into the depth of the all the facts, chemical and physical facts or the changes which what we can observe. So we must know the reason behind those, okay? So in order to find those reasons behind those, the behind those every chemical and physical facts, okay? So we need to perform the experimental things or the practicals during our lab experiments, right? So before entering our labs, we must know such important things, such techniques we must know. Okay, so today I will talk about those things. So let's begin. Yeah, number one technique is spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is a such a important and most common common uh, technique in chemistry and whatever for our experiment experimental work it is mostly used. So spectroscopy is a such a technique where we mainly pass the light over some matters and we see the interaction or changes and what are the changes actually coming out. Okay. Mainly this spectroscopy technique is used for determination of interaction from uh, with many functional groups, organic or inorganic functional groups, and also to see the structures of uh, the chemical molecules and also the products which we are getting out uh, in the in the last of our result as a result in the experiment. Okay, so actually basic depending on this particular principle of spectroscopy, uh, how they works and depending on the, their property and depending on their also the wavelengths of light we are used in that particular spectroscopies, there are lots of different of spectroscopies actually instruments which we must know just to enter before entering in our lab while experiment, okay? So there are lots of special type of spectroscopies like uh, IR spectroscopy. You can see here, this is IR spectroscopy where the infrared light is used, okay? The infrared radiation actually used. And another thing is also there are like UV visible spectroscopy and also laser spectroscopy and lots of spectroscopies are there. Just, just we need to understand the basic principle and the how the works how they are actually the principles and the working cap capability, how they works, um, how they find the results. So we must know before entering in the lab. Here is also you can say this is NMR, that is nuclear magnetic resonance is used in this NMR. Yeah. Our technique number two is chromatography. So chromatography is such a special technique, is used to separate the constituents of a particular mixture. So here actually the basic principle is the differentiate, differential partitioning basically where actually two phases are there. One is mobile phase and another is what? And this is stationary phase. So the mobile phase basically moves over the stationary phase and stationary phase remains fixed during our experiment. That's how it works. It is the basic principle and Throughout the throughout this uh, our experiment, we need to find out basically the partition coefficients with uh, different values actually. So once we get the different values of partition coefficient, coefficient, then it will be easy for us to just separate the uh, mixture constituents from its particular mixture. That's what chromatography. So depending on this particular principle, there are lots of different type of chromatographies like TLC that is thin layer chromatography, paper chromatography, uh, column chromatography, uh, HPCL that is high pressure chromatography, GC that is gas chromatography, etc. Lots of chromat um, chromatography techniques are there. So you can see here, yes, this is the basic principle how it works in most of the all type of chromatography instruments. Uh, yeah, this is column chromatography. 
how it works and how we can differentiate all the constituents from its particular mixture. Crystallization. This is our third technique. This is another important technique. It is mainly used to purify the solids. Okay. So for this, the principle is basically we dissolve the solid or the solutes in a particular solvent, suitable solvent actually, in a particular liquid and not in cold condition. Yes, remember this, not in cold condition. Obvious, obviously, we should dissolve this in the hot condition always. Okay, so just during this, depending on their solubility at different range of temperature, basically the crystallization takes place. This process mainly takes place. Okay, so this is another important technique we must know. Just if we are dealing with some inorganic or organic synthesis or separation, something like that, then definitely we must know this crystallization technique. Yeah, here we can see uh, you can see the crystals, like right? organic crystals. How we are getting as the result, the products, and the crystal is like this. If you follow this crystallization technique, it will take some time just to make the crystal from the liquid form. But yeah, it's an another important technique we must know. Yeah. Our number four technique is filtration. Filtration is another important technique, and I can say it's a basic technique just to perform any experiment during your lab orientation, research work or whatever you are performing. Okay, so filtration is a basic thing and just because of this you need to understand and need to know, must know the how the filter paper we fold and how the filter paper we use during this process. So for this, just first take the filter paper and fold it by half and again upper over that you need to fold it over, over that again and that's how now it is finally ready to use and now just don't use this funnel uh, by holding your hand throughout all the experiments, okay? So take a stand and clamp and first fix it there and then uh, adjust the filter paper over the funnel and just then pour the solution mixture, whatever you want to filter it actually. So just pour over the filter paper over the funnel and also always with using a stirrer throughout the your process throughout your process process okay so this is basically the principle how the filtration is doing so uh, another important technique is this and in order to do anything separation technique is right right filtration is another separation technique in order to do any kind of inorganic or organic synthesis separation everything we must use it or we must apply this okay so it's another important technique here you can see like filtration here yeah for any organic or inorganic test this is this is what it is look like and you have to do this, okay? You should know before entering your lab experiments. Our next important technique is, the number five technique is distillation. Distillation is another important technique, lab technique. Basically, uh, we must know because distillation is a, such a potted process uh, or method of separation. Uh, such a separation method. So here actually basically depending upon the uh, depending upon the uh, depending on different type of boiling boiling point of the particular crude mixture we uh, we actually use this distillation process and in order to uh, when we are working uh, on our organic synthesis or separation like that then our protein synthesis anything regarding like that distillation process is mainly required in organic most of most of case in organic synthesis part distillation is very very required thing and uh, yeah here you can see how we can distill the instrument is how it look like so this is basically the distillation technique and the whole instrument is look like and we know we must know this in order to perform our organic or inorganic synthesis or whatever we are doing so the lab technique is an important lab technique we must know yeah another important technique is reflux reflux is another important technique which is basically a condensation process from its vapor phase by which we can get back our original uh, liquid or condensed the liquid reaction mixture from its vapor phase phase okay so at different temp range of temperature basically we uh, do this and uh, it's another useful and another use of this reflux is what and in your important use that is the reflux is another case we use just to uh, supply the heat or temperature to our reaction uh, for a longer period of time 
if you want to carry out a reaction for a longer period of time, a period of time and uh, with a constant heat or temperature, then this process is again an important uh, technique you must know because it is used to supply the heat to the reaction. Okay. So basically how we can do this is a pictorial diagram and the instrument, whatever you can do. So this, yeah, this is the basic picture. There are two pipelines for going and releasing the water and this is the reflex technique. You must know this technique. It's a very, very important technique. Number seven technique is calibration of a burette, standardization and titration. Yes, titration and calibration is another very, very basic and important technique of your inorganic or organic chemistry. If you perform any type of experimental facts in your lab oriented works, okay? So basically for this calibration, uh, we must take at the initially initial stage a uh, volumetric flask or volumetric burette also, Erlenmeyer first flask and the stopper robbers. Okay, so after calibrating, after calibrating, what we do? Just standardization of acids or beds of all our solutions which is done then and thus we can get or calculate the strengths of unknown solutions. Okay, thus also we can say the standardization of every of the unknown or known solutions we can see standardize of the, their strength. Standardization of their strength is done like that. Okay, so uh, you should be obviously cautious while handling this titration or be red pipette because uh, uh, just cautious because how the finger is you can use there just to hold this. It is very, very important technique. It's a special technique you need to apply. If you don't know, it is very, very difficult for you to titrate everything. Okay. And also, uh, I must say while pipetting out the solution, you must know the technique how the thumb and or our this finger how we can use and how can easily we can pip it out the solutions okay so this are uh, this is all a, um, another important and basic technique we must know for pursuing our lab oriented research work yeah you can see uh, yeah Pink means obviously phenolphthalein uh, indicator is obviously you must know about the indicators. You don't forget just to use the indicators like methyl orange, phenolphthalein, anything regarding this BDS indicator, whatever during this because otherwise if you don't use this indicator, then it will be very, very difficult for you to get the end point, right? The titration point, okay, titrating point. So here how we can titrate here you can see is a very, very simple and basic technique we must know. Our eighth technique is heating over a constant weight at using of Bunshin burner. So heating over a constant weight and using of lab uh, burner or the we can say the Bunshin burner is another important technique because the adjustment of the flame and also how to properly uh, place the crucible which is to be heated over a constant period of time and over a constant weight, right? So it is very, very important technique you must know. And yeah, uh, another case is a flame test. Yes, flame heating means it's also you need to know about the bone shed burner and all about all about everything regarding flame. What are about the facts regarding oxidizing flame and the reducing flame, which are used in which cases. And also you should be careful about this using these things. Okay, so uh, you need to know how the flame is changed during the radical test or flame test, right? That's how you can recognize the different type of radicals present in your reaction mixtures or in your compositions, compounds and salt, whatever you are taking for the purpose, okay? So that's all the important facts you must, these are the basic facts, right? So heating over constant weight or whatever, heating or doing flame test, this is another, but that, that is all about, you have to know about the Bunshin burner, how we can use, how we can adjust the flame, how we can see the color, the changes of the flame regarding our, uh, through, throughout our, all the experiments, okay? So this is another important technique you must know. Yeah, here you can see the crucible is used here to heat for longer period of time just to have the uh, constant weight, okay, until we get the constant weight. And it's how we can test the flame test by change. Just we can, we have to see the change of the color of the flame. That's how you can recognize your radical what are present in the reaction mixture. Yeah. Technique number nine is measuring the specific volume of a liquid with a graduated cylinder. So just to measure specific volume with a graduated cylinder, it's 
also an another basic technique we must know because what are the basic principles how we use the graduated cylinder how it starts the zero from the begin from the top of the volumetric from the top of the uh, the cylinder or the bottom where the scale is started so you should know you should you must know during these things and also you have to be cautious about this during this process because you should have use only one uh, cylinder um, graduated cylinder during your whole process because you must know that one thing that uh, different type of graduated cylinder have different scale measuring scale so not all are same so just to error or minimize your uh, error during your results or whatever you are getting as results or data so just to minimize the error or to have a very 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 good accurate results just to for this just maintain using only one a particular uh, graduated cylinder during your whole the process or experimental facts okay so don't use so many cylinders in your uh, particular uh, experiments only use one or two which has the same skill maintains the same skill so these are all the basic techniques you must know okay so this is another important technique that is technique number 9 you must know before entering your lab yeah here you can see the how it measuring or the scale is defined and how it is looks like basically like that yeah our 10th and most important lab technique is taking care about calculation while dilution or every steps of experiment yes taking care about our calculation so it's very very important to maintain a note copy during your all the experiments or throughout your all the experiments and also to keep the or maintain the data there that is there because uh, it is very very important sometimes because uh, you have to calculate in every steps of your experiments uh, it is very very important in case of i can say like dilution or whatever you have you want to calculate the strength of your unknown salt on unknown, uh, unknown solution you have to calculate the strength so it just to maintain this a copy and also you have to keep uh maintain this keep maintaining this because otherwise uh, it will be difficult for you whether whether you have done any mistakes during your process or not or sometimes calculation is such a thing if you uh, just uh, do this thing during your whole process continue this cap cam uh, having calculation every time in every steps it is another positive thing is that you can have a advance idea an advance idea about the result which which will upcoming okay so upcoming results and also about um related to our experiment everything you should have an advance idea like this so you must maintain the calculation and must maintain a copy where you can keep your data everything in regarding your every steps of experiments experiments okay so this all are 10 all are the 10 most important lab techniques we must know just before entering our lab techniques uh, lab actually for our experimental works and if we follow these things i can assure you it will be very very easy easy for you to have any experimental works and also uh, it will be very very helpful for you and also to have a very good career uh, in the to pursue as a chemistry researcher very good researcher okay so have a good day everyone thank you everyone and all the best we will come with another topic in another day or oh, till then thank you